please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right. Uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. Um, I will note that um, one member, Mr. Pollard, is uh, unable to be here in person, but he should be on the on the line uh, and on the screen. And he says hello. Can you hear us all right? Yes, I can hear you fine. All right. Can you Rick. hear me? We hear you. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to open it up to council comments. All right, city manager's comments. Sure, I've just got a few things uh, today. Um, one, you know, it's getting springtime. Uh, I guess it's a little past springtime now. We're getting ready to roll in the summer, but it's starting to feel like summer, and I would encourage everyone to go out to Sugar Hollow Park and enjoy what we have at Sugar Hollow Park. Uh, there's plenty of picnic areas out there, places to play baseball or softball and soccer. So if you have the opportunity to go out and play at Sugar, Ho Sugar Hollow Park during the summer months, um, last week we had a joint meeting with the school board, which I think went very well. I think it's good to have open communications with different boards throughout the city. So hopefully we can continue to meet with the school board, um, at least on a somewhat regular basis as we, um, continue, uh, discussions with the school board on how to appropriately fund schools. Um, also remember that there are a lot of, uh, events in downtown Bristol during the summer months. We have, uh, concerts and movies in Cumberland Square Park, uh, Border Bash starts in June. And then, of course, the 4th of July fireworks are coming back this year, so hopefully uh, people will be able to go out and enjoy those this, this summer. Uh, also, uh, this week is Emergency Medical Services Week, so I'd like to thank all our EMS workers here in the city of Bristol and elsewhere that provide those services um, for people in need, especially when they may need them at the most serious times in their life. So thank you to the emergency medical service workers. And finally, I'd like to uh, recognize one of our employees um, who constantly amazes me at the fact that we have employees who are engaged in the city. They watch our city council meetings on a regular basis. I know we have employees at the fire department that watch on a regular basis and other employees throughout other city departments, but I do want to recognize uh, Larry Boardwine. He's our animal control officer. He continually watches and he's up to date on what's happening in the city. So I want to thank him and everybody else who watches our city council meetings so that they can stay up to date on what's happening here in the city. All right, very good, thank you. Uh, matters to be presented by members of the public for non-agenda items. We have one person who signed up for a non-agenda item and that is uh, Mr. Lawrence Dunn. And uh, as you're on your way up, so when you get up here, if you will uh, state your name and where you're from. Green light comes on, you have three minutes. Yellow light comes on, you have 30 seconds. Red light comes on, you're out of time. So if you just wrap up after that. And uh, thank you very much. This is a, <clears throat> my name is Lawrence Dunn. I'm a Bearcat class of 1981. I'm a lifelong resident. I'm here to tell who needs to pay for the dump, the businesses. They have made money for years off the backs of the lower class. It took a pandemic to finally get decent pay. So businesses owe this community for being what they are today. The businesses owes this community the most that would absolutely not exist whatsoever in Bristol is the casino. The ones of us that voted for these are the ones that are truly responsible for their local existence. So maybe they and the other employers here can stand tall and show their appreciation to Bristol's citizens. It would gain respect and loyalty from the workforce and the community. It would strengthen the economy here and make more profitable. It would build morale. And without the debt, the city could fund its schools like promised, as well as addressing other important issues. Considering the casino choice was not put up for bid, it was handed to Hard Rock. Leaders should have said, we're in a terrible way on this and we need some help. We're going to choose you and you all will help us. That would be just 10% a month for 60 months at the 13 to $15 million they're making a month. Why should the residents pay? This started with Paul Spangler seeing the dump as a cash cow. So it piled up faster than it could decompose. Several years ago, a city road engineer 
told me the dump was about to be an ecological disaster. They should have stopped taking trash then and began a search for a place to take it then. Instead, they kept it coming for the money. I didn't support buying the files. It's another rock quarry. We had one, that was enough. And then the city was surprised that the rock quarry had so many rocks. So why put the burden on us? We have a person making decisions that does not live here, nor was he interviewed for the job as city manager. He was put in under shady circumstances. He should take his job as an attorney and we should look and hire a city manager. If he didn't have so many jobs, he wouldn't need help. Three of you up there know I made a serious accusation against our police department. The mayor lied and said he'd get back to me the same week. That was the week that he was sworn in. I gave him an extra week and responded again, and I got no response from him, even though he told me he would. And you got two classes of people. You got the rich ones getting the special treatment. They should pay more than us. I saw and reported a drive-by shooting with an automatic airsoft gun. I was never interviewed, and four rich kids got special treatment and got off. Not having an incident like that on their record is priceless. And three of you think that's okay. Three of you think it's okay. You all didn't investigate, and you didn't get back to me. We need to fire the mayor, the vice mayor, the ex-mayor, the city manager, and the police chief. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we have one other person that signed up, and, and so it looks like you signed up for, for an agenda item, so you'll get there in the, in the agenda item section, Mr. Knapp. Uh, next is adoption of the agenda. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt the agenda as presented. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Farnham, second from Mr. Holmes. Please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. All right, uh, into the regular agenda. Uh, item one is a proclamation to honor and recognize the Virginia High School swimming and diving team for winning a 2023 Class 1-2 state championship. Staff report. Council, on February 18th, 2023, in Christiansburg, Virginia, the Virginia High School swimming and diving team uh, captured the Class 1-2 state championship with a team score of 202 over Clark County and Ranford. Tonight, we recognize these student athletes and coaches for all their hard work and congratulate them on this huge accomplishment. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next is reading of the proclamation, which I believe I do. Uh, reading the proclamation. A proclamation to honor and recognize the Virginia High School swimming and diving team for winning a 2023 Class 1-2 state championship. Whereas the city of Bristol, Virginia wishes to honor and recognize the Virginia High School swimming and diving team comprised of 12 members and coaches for winning the Virginia High School League Class 1-2 state championship. And whereas the commitment required for student athletes to be a part of a sports team including Meetings required grade, meeting required grades, attendance, and volunteer requirements, in addition to attending daily practices and scheduled competition events. And whereas on February 18, 2023, the Virginia High School swimming and diving team competed in the Class 1-2 state championship at Christiansburg Aquatic Center in Christiansburg, Virginia. And whereas Virginia High finished with a team score of 202 compared to 169 for runner-up Clark County and a tally of 165 for third place Radford, the Bearcats earned their state title that ended a string of near misses for the squad. And now, therefore, by virtue of the authority invested in me as the mayor and on behalf of the Bristol City Council and citizens, I applaud the commitment of the Virginia High School Swimming and Diving Team 2023 Class 1-2 state champions. The council wishes them success in all their future endeavors. Looking for a motion and a second. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the proclamation as read. Second. All right, motion by the vice mayor and second by Mr. Holmes. Council discussion. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I wanted to start off and just say congratulations to the Virginia High School swim team. Um, as a Bearcat alumni, I'm always following the sports. Uh, throughout the years, my children attended there as well as still now. And I couldn't be more proud of this swim team. Um, I followed all of you all. I know a lot of your names and recognize them from sports and other sports you do. 
And then especially um, also to the head coach, um, Coach Finn Ostrin, and then also to Coach Molly, who um, was also there a few years back when I was there, and I can't say enough about all the, I'm, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> um, and I appreciate all that you all have done and also the youth leadership and, and making a difference in youth lives throughout the years. Um, I would like to also um, name each member of the state swim team. And I also want to recognize um, Braden uh, Meredith for your first place in the uh, dive and getting the state championship in that, um, which I think kicked off this whole thing and ended up then the whole team uh, won in the state championship. So um, I want to recognize Coleman Austin, Gage Coleman, Elijah Fricker, Adam Horoski, Wilson Hartley, Brody Jones, Carter Kerr, Justin Mai, Braden Meredith, Caden Price, and Carter Price. So congratulations to all of you all. We are proud. You know, I'll just I'll just say to you all, as someone who can't even swim, um, <laughs> I'm super impressed with what you all done and you know I've, I followed along and read and you know it, it is a true accomplishment you know to win at the level you all did and um, you know this is just setting yourselves up for the very first uh, this is your first big thing or maybe not your first big thing but it's the first big thing for you all and you know setting you up for a whole lot of future success and uh, the commitment you have to your team to your teammates to your school and your grades you know it's it's a really big deal so so congratulations and, and what we're going to do after we vote if you all will come up here we'll take a picture and I'll give you this paper but um, I'm going to see if anybody else has anything to say. Great work, guys. You're awesome. All right. Uh, clerk, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. And if you all come down here, we'll all take a picture. And I will also add to that, this is the first state championship for swim and diving in the program history of Virginia High School. So that is a huge, huge accomplishment. All right. All right, and thank you all again. And let's give them one more round of applause for what they did. All right. Uh, next item is proclamation designating May as Foster Care Awareness Month slash Foster Friendly Business Month. Staff report. Uh, Council, the City of Bristol, Virginia recognizes May as National Foster Care Awareness Month and we seek to honor the dedication of foster families, organizations, faith leaders and businesses that support our children in care as well as social service workers that support them. In solidarity with Small Business Month, Virginia Kids Belong is recognizing businesses that are foster friendly that open their hearts and homes to serving children in Virginia's foster care system. Alrighty, thank you. Uh, reading of the proclamation, do you want to do that one? I thought you were doing proclamations, <laughs> but I can do it. We can trade off. You go ahead. All right. A proclamation designating May as Foster Care Awareness Month, Foster Friendly Business Month. Whereas the city, Bristol City Council, the governing legislative institution of Bristol, Virginia and the United States of America, recognize that May is National Foster Care Awareness Month and that this body seeks to honor the dedication of our foster families, organizations, faith leaders and businesses that support our children in care as well as the social service workers that support them. And whereas we do hereby unite in solidarity and common purpose to also recognize the month of May, Small Business Month as small businesses are critically important to supporting their communities in many ways to promote the well-being and the ongoing success of our thriving community. 
And whereas we would like to officially recognize the contribution of Bristol small businesses in supporting the Foster Friendly Business Initiative, an invaluable program to support those foster families that have opened their hearts and home to serving children in Virginia's foster care system. And whereas we recognize that this important partnership brings the strengths of the private business partners together with the strengths of our local government to help solve one of our community's greatest challenges and help us meet the aims to recruit, retain, and support our foster families and the foster children they serve. And now therefore be it resolved in recognition of Foster Care Awareness Month and in recognizing the dedication of our small business partners, faith leaders, and other community partners to improve the condition of our most vulnerable children and deliver a world class foster friendly business initiative that brings the best example of public private partnership to support bold transformational community action. The Bristol City Council do hereby proclaim and establish the month of May to be Foster Friendly Business Month in perpetuity in Bristol, Virginia, and thank those working on behalf of Bristol residents for helping make our town an even more vibrant, thriving, and compassionate place to call home. Adopted this the 23rd day of May, 2023. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Looking for a motion and a second on this. I move the proclamation. Second. second. All right, so a motion from Mr. Pollard, second from Mr. Holmes. Council discussion. Um, I'll just first, I just want to say a special thank you um, to um, uh, the foster families and the foster friendly businesses. I serve as an appointment from this council on the Department of Social Services board, so I see firsthand the difference that it makes. So a special thank you to all of them. I would like. I would like to also add, um, this is such an important initiative. Um, oftentimes these, these kids in foster care don't have, don't have strong advocates for them. So designating this month as Foster Care Awareness Month, um, Foster Friendly Business Month is such a, a, a PR thing, but it's such a good rec recognition for the need in our community and, and what we can do, what businesses can do. So I, I appreciate us doing this. Well, we have um, had as a discussion for the city council several times the topic of abortion. Well, abortion, if we were to eliminate abortion, that does not resolve our issue because we have to make sure that the kids are taken care of. Fostering kids helps make sure that those kids who are born have a safe, family-friendly environment in which to live and thrive. and. The, the, this organization helps make sure that happens and they are very valuable to our community in doing so. All right, and I'll just say um, it, is, it is incredibly important. The, the number of children who are you know, in foster care for you know, a lot of reasons and, and none, of them, you know, none of them their own fault, you know, it, it's important to support families that um, to take these kids in and provide them with a loving environment, a loving household, and a family. Um, so, you know, I know we're declaring May as, you know, Foster Care Awareness Month, but it, you know, it should be all, all 12 months. You know, you should, you should be aware of the tremendous sacrifice that foster families make and, and the commitment they have to this, you know, all 365 days a year. Um, so I'll say after, after we have this vote, I believe Mr. Verlander is here. Uh, do, do, did you want to say anything before we vote? Thank you. All right. Well, hearing no other discussion, uh, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. And if you want to come down, I'll give you a... Next time we have multiple proclamations, I'm going to have some kind of walk-up music to get back up here. Uh, item three, 
Code of Ethics and Standards of Conduct for Council Members of the City of Bristol. Staff report. Uh, council, several years ago, um, City Council wanted a Code of Ethics and Conduct uh, for Council Members, and we have developed that policy, and it's been uh, signed on several different occasions by previous councils, and uh, this should have been in the January agenda, but it was neglected, and we're just now putting it on for the uh, this agenda. So the City of Bristol, Virginia recognizes that persons who hold public office have been given a public trust and that the stewardship of such office demands the highest levels of ethical and moral conduct. Any person serving on the Bristol, Virginia City Council should adhere to the Code of Ethics and the Standards of Conduct. We ask that each member of council sign the Code of Eth Ethics and Standards of Conduct. All right, thank you very much. Uh, looking for a motion and a second on this. Second. So moved. All right, so we had, everybody wanted to move on this. So we had a motion by the Vice Mayor and second by Mr. Farnham. Uh, council discussion. All right. Uh, and I'll just say we have a copy of it that we're going to pass around, have everybody sign, and whenever Mr. Pollard is back, um, we'll give him the opportunity to sign it also. Um, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. All right. Uh, item four is resolution authorizing the mayor of Bristol to renew the joint cooperation agreement with the Northeast Tennessee Virginia Home Consortium. Uh, no one has signed up for public comment. Staff report. Uh, Council, the city of Bristol, Virginia has been a member of the Northeast Tennessee Virginia Home Consortium since 2003. The city of Bristol, Tennessee is lead entity for the consortium receives and administer home funds on behalf of the member entities. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development requires proof of continued participation documentation for new three-year qualification periods. To satisfy program requirements, staff must obtain a resolution or equivalent documentation from each participating community for the upcoming three-year period of July 1, 2024 through June 30th of 2027. Staff is requesting council approve the continuance of the city's membership with the Northeast Tennessee Virginia Home Consortium for an additional three-year period. All right, thank you. Uh, reading of the resolution. Resolution authorizing the mayor of Bristol, Virginia to renew the joint cooperation agreement with Northeast Tennessee Virginia Home Consortium for an additional three-year qualification period. Whereas the city of Bristol, Virginia has determined that the health and welfare of its citizens and the economic vitality of the area will benefit from increasing the availability of decent, safe, affordable housing. And whereas a cooperative regional approach to providing housing avoids duplication of efforts and promotes more effectively delivery of services. And whereas a consortium of area local governments is entitled to receive funding from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development under the Home Investment Partnerships Act that they would be unqualified to receive individually. And whereas in 2003, the city of Bristol, Tennessee and other units of local governments formed the Northeast Tennessee Virginia Home Consortium, enabling the city of Bristol, Tennessee to receive and administer home funds as lead entity on behalf of the consortium. And whereas the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development requires such consortia to be formally redesignated every three years. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the city council of the city of Bristol, Virginia, that the city council hereby supports the continuation of the Northeast Tennessee Virginia Home Consortium and authorizes the mayor to execute agreements with other participating units of general purpose local government to continue this consortium. The mayor is further authorized to sign all contracts approved by the city attorney with other governmental agencies as may be required to carry out activities of the cooperation agreement. All right, thank you very much. Uh, looking for a motion and a second to take action on this. I move to approve the resolution as presented. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Farnham, second from the Vice Mayor. Council discussion. All right, hearing none, the clerk will call the roll, please. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Uh, next item, resolution approving application of Virginia Tobacco Regional Revitalization Commission for feasibility study, Mendota Trailhead Connector to Bristol. Uh, no one has signed up for public comment. Staff report. Uh, the 12 mile Mendota Trail is almost completed. Most of the trail is currently opened. I believe they're supposed to complete the rest of it by the end of the year. It runs from Mendota in Washington County, Virginia to the Bristol City Line. A recommendation in the Mendota Trail Master Plan uh, 2021 
uh, is to create a safe bike connector path from the Bristol Trailhead to downtown Bristol. The City of Bristol is requesting funding from the Virginia Tobacco Region Revitalization Commission uh, for about $100,000 as match for an Appalachian Regional Commission grant, uh, which is a rise. Um, the cost of the feasibility study will be approximately $200,000. So I, I will just add once um, we'll make application for both um, of these funders to match each other. All right, thank you very much. Uh, reading of the resolution. A resolution of the City Council of the City of Bristol, Virginia, authorizing submission of an application to the Virginia Tobacco Region Revitalization Commission for a feasibility study on proposed connector from Rendota Trailhead to downtown Bristol, whereas the City of Bristol, Virginia is eligible to apply for funding from the Virginia Tobacco Region Revitalization Commission, and whereas Mountain Heritage is finalizing all trestle work on the 12-mile Mendota Trail, which runs from Mendota, Virginia to Bristol, Virginia to the Bristol City Line, and whereas Mountain Heritage has established a trailhead at the Bristol City Line for the sole purpose of Mendota Trail access from the city, and whereas the connector is a recommendation in the Mendota Trail Master Plan, which was completed in 2021, the project has the capacity to serve as a catalyst for economic development in downtown Bristol as well as the entire region, and whereas the City of Bristol intends to request $100,000 from the Virginia Tobacco Region Revitalization Commission as 50% match for an Appalachian Regional Commission Arise Grant request of $100,000 in the spring of 2024. Total funding request for the feasibility study will be $200,000. $10,000 has been secured from Mountain Heritage. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of Bristol, Virginia, the Council does hereby authorize and direct City Manager Randall Eads to sign and submit appropriate documents for that grant application to the Virginia Tobacco Region Revitalization Commission to complete a feasibility study for a proposed connector from the Bristol Trailhead of Mendota Trail to downtown Bristol. Such grant request is to total 200000 passed and adopted by the City Council of the City of Bristol, Virginia at a regularly scheduled meeting of said council held on the 23rd day of May, 2023. All right, thank you very much. Uh, looking for a motion and a second to take action on this. So moved. Second. All right, motion from the Vice Mayor, second from Mr. Holmes, council discussion. Um, I do have a question. So so this is, 100, 000, this is um, an application for a $100,000 grant from the Tobacco Regional Re Revitalization Commission. You said there was uh, 100000 from ARC that this would match, correct? Yeah, uh, we, we got an a, a estimate that the, the study would be about one hundred fifty dollars to $200,000. So both the Tobacco Commission and uh, ARC require a 50% match. So what we will do is we will apply to both to match each other. Okay, that, that kind of leads up to where I was going with that. So, so the city has no financial responsibility for money to come from us? No, outside not, not us. if it works out the way I, you know, we plan on it. Okay. All right, that, that was the only question I had. You know, I'll just say, you know, I think if you've not checked out the Mendota Trail uh, or checked out the trailhead connector that's over off of um, Island Road, uh, certainly do it. You know, they've, they've done a whole lot of work and it is, you know, it's beautiful and you know, it's good for your health. So get out and you know check it out. Uh, any other discussion? I'll just add to that. I think having the Mendota Trail, um, having that trailhead in the city and then connecting it to our downtown. So many Thai recreation, they may want to go downtown and eat at a restaurant while they're bike, after they're biking the trail or before, but also visiting our attractions. Um, this also will um, help boost businesses in our downtown. So mm -hmm. I hope to see it happen. Um, I know when, if you, if you know that route from downtown to the trailhead, it wouldn't be a safe area right now just because there's some of the, there's some sidewalks there, but then also you're kind of walking on roads that don't really have much area to get off on the side of the road. So this would also be uh, for safety as well, but I think it would be a great asset for us to have. So I'm glad you're looking into it and applying for the ARC money and the tobacco commission. I just want to say I'm very excited about this. Um, I wasn't blessed to have grown up in, De in Bristol. I grew up in Damascus. Um, that town would not survive without the Creeper Trail, without the Appalachian Trail. Mm -hmm. So just knowing what trails can do for a community and um, what Mendota, the Mendota Trail has already started to do for our community, bringing that downtown, connecting it is just going to be phenomenal if, if the study goes well and if we can get funding for it. There's a lot of ifs, but hopefully it'll be an exciting turnout at the end. So thank you. All right. 
<clears throat> Hearing no further discussion, if the clerk would call the roll, please. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Uh, next item is public hearing regarding the PY 2023 Community Development Block Grant, CDBG, and home allocations. Uh, I'll open the public hearing. No one has signed up for public comment. Staff report. As an entitlement community development block grant CDBG grantee, the City of Bristol receives annual federal funding through the U.S. Department of Housing and Ur Urban Development, better known as HUD. This year's allocation totals $259,836 in CDBG funds and $86,365.36 in home funds, which are administered through the Tennessee-Virginia Home Consortium, of which Bristol is a member. Each year, the city must develop an annual action plan that provides a blueprint to HUD as to how the city will spend its CDBG funding. The annual action plan is developed by the city's Department of Community and Economic Development and is based upon identified needs of its low-income residents and communities within the city. All activities must be part of the city's CDBG consolidated plan, which is established every five years, outlines the city's goals, and is submitted to HUD. Staff has posted two public notices and held a public comment period as required with drafts of the annual action plan made available to the public. This is to provide the public with the opportunity to participate in the development of needs, review the proposed activities, and review past program performance. The first public hearing was held on March 28, 2023, and the se second public hearing is being held tonight. At the March 28th regularly scheduled council meeting, the mayor's subcommittee was formed and directed to review this year's CDBG annual action plan and recommended activities. The subcommittee met on April 21st, 2023 with staff to fulfill this direction. The subcommittee approved staff recommendations for the program year 2023 CDBG annual action plan and associated activities. And I would like to thank Councilwoman Nave and Councilman Farnham for participating on the subcommittee. And I have a very brief PowerPoint just to show, uh, to outline um, the CDBG allocation uh, for this year. Um, <coughs> so draft and original recommendations were made by staff. It was reviewed and approved by the council subcommittee. Total awarded 259,836. This is a little bit of a decrease from last year. And then to total home funds awarded is 86,365, which is actually a little bit of an increase uh, this year. So for the CDBG award, um, administration typically gets 20%, which is $51,967. This includes sal staff salary, travel, supplies, public notices. Um, for city projects and activities, which include sidewalks, demo, emergency home repair, code enforcement, economic development, and other public improvement projects. We're allocating $168,899. Uh, for public service projects, we can allocate up to 15%. This includes organizations such as Crossroads Medical Mission, Kings Mountain Supportive Housing, uh, Children's Advocacy Center. Um, so we're, we're allocating $38,970 for that. And then we do have some carryover, which is unspent uh, funds from uh, prior years in the amount of 189,482. And what I'd like to do is I'll show you how we broke out the public service. Um, no, this is, um, this is more of a breakout of, um, for the different um, projects that we're gonna be using it for. So admin, as I said before, is 51,967. Public services, which I'll show you the breakdown in just a moment for that, is 38,970. Economic development, uh, 1,262 to add to the carryover we already have. Sidewalk improvements, we're allocating 20,000, and then we have 140 plus in carryover for that. Um, blight removal, we're allocating 3,168, um, and we have a little bit of carryover for that. Emergency home repair, once again, we've allocated a bit more uh, for that because it is so much in demand, and this is the first year that I've been doing this that I've run out of money. Um, that's due to the number of applications we get and higher costs um, for things. But we've allocated $85,269 for that. 
Code enforcement, $29,700. Um, Jones Creativity Center is considered economic development and is part of the Bristol Public Library. We're giving them uh, 15000 this year. Boys and Girls Club, um, they want to make a bathroom addition. It's kind of an expansion project for $8,500. And then Bristol Transit has um, asked for an ADA ramp at the Douglas School Apartments uh, for bus transit access in the amount of $6,000. So total allocation, as you can see, is $259,836 with the $189,482 in carryover. Here's a more of a breakdown for the public service funding. Um, this is competitive process. We receive applications and we have a team that scores them and we go through them. Um, and this chart up here shows you what they requested and the allocation amount that they get. Um, we cannot, we don't have enough money to fund everybody 100% even though we would like to. So Kings Mountain Supportive Housing is, um, alloc we're allocating $8,000. Uh, Girls Inc. Equipment, uh, new gym, they've got a new gym going up and we're going to provide them with some sports equipment and bleachers. We're allocating $2,500, that'll I believe give them two sets of bleachers. Um, Children's Advocacy Center, we're allocating 7,600. Bristol Speech and Hearing, um, $6,000. Appalachian Independence Center, um, 3,870. Crossroads Medical Mission, we're allocating 6,000. United Way Home Program, we're not allocating anything uh, this year. Family Promise of Bristol, we are funding them $5,000 for one uh, AmeriCorps position for the year. So that's the total request of $38,970. Home funds allocation for the city of Bristol is $86,365. This can be used for down payment assistance, uh, major rehab and reconstruction activities. And this, of course, is administered through the First Tennessee Development District on behalf of the Northeast Tennessee Virginia Hunt Consortium. Are there any questions, comments? I, I do have one for you. Um, serving on the United Way board, I, I feel like I have to ask. Um, most of the others got a little something. What was the reasoning behind that one, if you don't mind? Uh, the main reason is we found that it was it was a duplication of services, and we are not supposed to do that with CDBG funds. Um, the monies they were requesting were to house homeless persons. It's like permanent supportive housing, and we do have other organizations that do that. Thank you. So there was, a, there was an enormous amount of carryover from last year, and that looked like that was mostly in, I guess, sidewalk replacement. Is that correct? Yeah, typically the, we, we used to allocate most of our money towards sidewalks, and with COVID and with everything else going on, we just have not had much sidewalk activity. Um, but I've been talking to Public Works, and we're going to spend some of that money this year. So that's, so that's basically what most of the carryover is. I assumed it was, it was an issue with, with being able to staff to, to do the work, you know, mostly. Um, so we do, we do have some plans for putting in new sidewalks, for fixing existing sidewalks. Okay. Yes. That's, a, that's an enormous amount to carry over. That's what, basically it's, seven years worth of allocation if you look at it. Yeah, and it's not more. good. We want to we spend the money we get. So Absolutely. we're going to try to do better this year. Any other questions? Well, I, I just wanted to say thank you for your work on this. We discussed a lot about the issues that that we have in the community. We talked a lot about sidewalks and then also the emergency home repair category, which was one where you essentially maybe have like a waiting list. Um, we mentioned you were running out of, of funds. So those are important things. I think the money will go to some good things here in the that, city. That's the, the most demanded program we have and mm -hmm. very worthwhile, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, and I'll just add, thank you, Ellen, for your work on this. Um, I know you always make it um, very easy for us to go through the applications and go through the process of reviewing these. And I know it's also a tough decision. I wish we had a ton of money in every situation to, to yeah. fund everything. But thank you. I know you've got the hardest job in that. So thank you for your work on it. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Uh, hearing no further discussion, so this is a this is a public hearing, so there's no action item on this. So we'll go ahead and close the public hearing, and this will come back up for approval to us at a later date. Correct. Uh, no, I'd like to, you could, I'd like for council to draft the annual action plan as submitted. Can we do that? I think that's on. Because since we have the public hearing tonight, can we? We didn't have it on the agenda for. An I approval. didn't. No. Uh, no, we just got the public hearing on there for the agenda. Okay. So is it okay to approve it at the? It would be great if y'all would approve it tonight. If not, I will come back if you need, you'd like me to. I think there's a, if you make a motion to approve it tonight, I think that's appropriate. Okay. All right. Okay. So since it's not on the agenda and we're going to vote on it, I'm going to ask if there is any public comment on it. I know you all are probably unprepared, so I'm sorry. But, uh, but hearing none, so I will go ahead and entertain a motion if we want to do that. I'll make a motion uh, to approve the action plan as presented. Second. All right. Motion from the Vice Mayor, second from Mr. Farnham. And this is to give final approval for the Community Development Block Grant Home Allocation Plan as presented. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. All right, next item is approval of a contract with Quantum Consultants to update the city comprehensive plan. Staff report. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Uh, just a little background. Most of you probably know what the city comprehensive plan is. It is the plan which um, guides future land use development in the city. Uh, it is also a required plan by state code. You'll hear me talk about the comprehensive plan a lot when I do the rezoning staff reports, special use permits, staff reports. Is this part of the comprehensive plan? Is it consistent with the plan? So this is probably the most important plan that we have in this department that, that we look to for these future land use discussions. Uh, as I mentioned, state code does require the Planning Commission to evaluate the current comprehensive plan every five years to determine whether or not we should keep the old one or do an update. And when I say update, I, I'm pretty much meaning a new plan. So we're updating what we already have for a new plan. Um, the current plan right now has been determined by the Planning Commission that it does need to be rewritten. Uh, the previous plan was in 2017, and as you know, everything that's happened within the last five years uh, between COVID, um, we have a new zoning ordinance update since then, a subdivision ordinance, the casino, a new intermediate school. So there's a lot that's happened over the last five years that uh, both staff and the Planning Commission believed that we should go ahead and present a new plan to help us through these next five to 10 years of development. Uh, so staff advertised a request for proposals at the end of uh, 2022. Four proposals were submitted and the Comprehensive Plan Selection Committee chose two finalists to interview. Of those two finalists, Quantum Consultants was selected. The proposed amount of the contract is for $120,000 and it is attached along with the proposed scope of the project. There is one typo I noticed in that contract under section number two, the um, performance time. It does still say May 15th. That will be updated, say May 23rd, if it is approved. So based on this, staff recommends approval of the contract. All right, thank you very much. Uh, looking for a motion and a second to take action on this. Mr. Mayor, I move we approve this contract as presented. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Farnham, second from Mr. Holmes. <coughs> Council discussion. I just wanted to say thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. J, about uh, all the work that you've done with the Planning Commission and with the Comprehensive Plan. Uh, it, it's a very important part of the city, and the last time it was done, the comprehensive plan was in 2017 so there was really no discussion yet even of a of a casino so that whole exit one gate city highway area was not even really um uh, you know discussed much so <clears throat> i think it's important for us to to do the 
do the comprehensive plan, but also to not have it on a bookshelf, to have it out and uh, for us to make sure we're following it um, and, and to look ahead now that you know stuff's changing the city to look at what do we want exit one to look like, exit five, exit seven, uh, as new development happens over the next five years. So, so it's, a, it's a good step for us to take. I want to express my appreciation for everything that Mr. Dietrich does uh, for the city with its planning. Uh, and I want to say that uh, I do see the usefulness of uh, an updated, comp a new comprehensive plan, particularly with the changes in the city over the past year and planned over the next year. Um, however, I'm not convinced that we need a comprehensive plan right now, especially with the amount that it'll cost the city. I was involved with the current comprehensive plan and I was chair of the planning commission for several years. Uh, the planning commission and city staff review the comprehensive plan regularly and they update it periodically. And they have made some changes, particularly concerning the future land use map. They have a state mandate to review the plan every five years, but not necessarily to entirely redo it, much less to pay an outside firm to do so. Again, I see the value in doing so, but I'd rather wait another year or two for this cost. That said, I understand that the council doesn't have much choice in the matter other than to approve the vendor and to provide funding. Uh, so I, I want to voice my objection to the timing, but the vendor selection does seem appropriate. I will say, I, th I think it's vital that we do this right, that um, the city has a good plan, a solid plan going forward. Um, state code requires it every five years uh, due to COVID and, and other things we've been operating with the last couple of years, we're a little behind on this, so we need to, to make sure we do this correctly. Um, there has been a lot of changes in our city over the last six years. Um, serving on the Planning Commission in the last two years, I have seen, seen a lot of those, uh, seen the impacts of a lot of those, and seen, seen some gaps in our current plan that just aren't covered. We're just not, not being able to deal with, from the plan, things that we need to deal with. So I, I, I think that it is vital that we move forward with this. It is vital that we have a solid, um, comprehensive plan for the city. Um, we've seen in previous years the results of not having a solid plan for our city. Let's not do that again. So I, I think we should move forward with this. I would also add that, um, and Jay, I, I was working on something else. I was looking at some other notes, and you may have covered this, but. Did you advise council what the cost was of the other uh, RFPs that we received? Yeah, we did receive the the range was quite interesting. Um, they were from three hundred and some thousand dollars down to the one hundred and twenty. So there was a large range. So we felt that this one and one of the other consultants were the not only were the most qualified, but also had the best. Um, as far as, I guess, bang for the buck, so. I think as, you know, as, as everyone has alluded to, Bristol 2017 is very different than Bristol 2023. So it, it seems like it's gonna be almost a complete overhaul, you know, of, of what we have, so. Um, obviously I know we're required to take the lowest responsive and responsible bidder uh, for RFP prices, but um, you know, I appreciate quantum consultants for, mm -hmm for putting in their bid. Um, I did a little bit of Googling when I first heard this. I know they're a very good company, so you know, they'll, they'll produce a very quality product. And I will tell you, they were responsible for the Mendota Trail Master Plan, so they are familiar with Bristol. Mm -hmm. So that'll be good. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, if the clerk would call the roll, please. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. All right, uh, public hearing for proposed non-residential waste collection fees and waste container permit fees. Uh, I'm gonna open the public hearing and I'm gonna ask uh, Mr. Nupp before, before I jump into public comment. So when, when you signed up, you put trash fee, were, were you talking about for commercial trash fees or for residential? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna hold off on you then if that's okay. All right, so uh, no one has signed up for public comment on this one. Staff report. 
Uh, Council, before you, we are, uh, staff is proposing an increase in um, non-residential collection fees. Uh, staff has reviewed the quarterly fees for commercial accounts as well as annual, weekly, and temporary waste container permit fees. And as a result of the review, the following fees are proposed. Instead of going through that list, um, basically we increase the fees by $30 um, per billing cycle. If you had one container, each additional container was an increase of uh, either 15, 12 or $15. So we're asking council to approve these new commercial rates uh, moving forward. All right, <clears throat> thank you very much. Uh, close the public hearing, move into first reading of ordinances, and first one is Ordinance 23-13, an ordinance to amend city code, app <clears throat> city code appendix to Chapter 70, Paragraph 1B and Paragraphs 3A, 3B, and 3C, pertaining to non-residential waste collection fees and waste container permit fees. Uh, no one's on public comment for this. Staff report. Uh, council, in the separate action, Council is considering an increase in the monthly residential collection fee to provide operational and capital funding for the Solid Waste Disposal Fund. The purpose of this ordinance is to consider increasing non-residential fees for waste collection and waste container permits effective July 1, 2023. I would also add that we will have a called meeting uh, a week from tonight. Um, that time is yet to be determined. It will either be at noon or at 6 p.m and I'll let you all decide that at some point later this week as to what time would be appropriate for that. Um, so we recommend uh, approving these increased fees on the first reading. All right, this is, this is just the previous item that, um, that we just had the public yes. hearing for, for the non-resident, non okay. All right, looking for a motion and a second for first reading of the ordinance, and I would remind everyone it can be in full or by caption only. Mr. Mayor, I move for first reading of this ordinance by caption only. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Farnham, second from Mr. Pollard. Council discussion. The uh, non-residential fees have been largely unchanged <coughs> for a long time, and I think these increases are reasonable. I just wish we were able to make things work for residential collection with the same percentage increases. How many uh, commercial customers do we have, roughly? I don't know the number of commercial customers we have, but it, right now we budget approximately $100,000 a year in commercial fees. Mm -hmm. This will increase, uh, these fees will increase uh, that amount to about $122,000. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, please call the roll. Farnham. Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Uh, reading of the ordinance by caption only. An ordinance to amend city code appendix to Charter 70, paragraph 1B, and paragraphs 3A, 3B, and 3C pertaining to solid waste fees. All right, thank you. So now we'll move into ordinances that will be on their second reading. Uh, an ordinance to vacate all of a certain public right of way in the city of Bristol. Uh, no one has signed up for public comment. Staff report. Uh, Council, this is the second reading of the ordinance. This um, vacating the public right of way off of Glenway Avenue. Uh, code 15.2-2006 requires the vacating of a public right of way, requires advertising of such requests in a public hearing. The City Council should then consider the request to vacate the right of way by ordinance. Attached is the ordinance that you all have previously approved. Uh, staff recommends the City Council vacate the public right of way as shown on the attached drawing. There are no existing or proposed utilities on the segment of the unopened and unimproved alley. Therefore, it is recommended that no utility easements will be retained by the City. All right, thank you very much. Uh, looking for a motion and a second for second reading of the ordinance, and this can be in full or by caption only. I move the second reading of the ordinance by caption only. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Holmes, second from the Vice Mayor, Council discussion. Uh, I just think we talked about this at the first reading. This is an unopened, undeveloped alley and the owner owns on both sides is my understanding and um, don't foresee any plans of the city developing this, opening this anytime soon, so it, it makes sense. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong from looking at this map, it, it's a very narrow strip of land so it's, it's not really developable 
anyway, correct? That's correct. Okay. All right. Uh, hearing no further discussion, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. All right. Second reading of the ordinance by caption only. Ordinance to vacate a portion of an unopened, unimproved public right of way. It's ordinance 23-13. All right. Now we are looking for a motion and a second to adopt the ordinance. I'll make a motion to adopt the ordinance as presented. Second. All right. Motion from the vice mayor, second from Mr. Holmes. Please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. All right. Uh, next item. Ordinance 23-7, an ordinance to amend Chapter 66 to the city code pertaining to personnel. No one has signed up for public comment. Staff report. Uh, council, before you uh, is an ordinance to repeal certain uh, code sections related to personnel. Those code sections will be incorporated in a employee handbook that you all will see in one of the June meetings that will be adopted by council. Um, this, um, these ordinances that we have in the personnel section now remain largely as they did in 1966. Uh, so it's time to update those ordinances and put them in a proper employee handbook. All right, very good. Uh, looking for a motion and a second for second reading of the ordinance, which can be in full or by caption only. I move the second reading of the ordinance by caption only. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Holmes, second from the vice mayor. Council discussion. Well, I think just like Mr. Reed's already um, said, these have been in place since 1966. A lot of things have changed do things a lot differently nowadays than we did in 1966 mm -hmm. as before uh, I think all of us were bored. So um, I think that this was a need and I appreciate you all taking the time to review these and, and realizing the need to update our um, handbooks. All right, uh, hearing no further discussion, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? <coughs> yes. All right. Uh, reading the ordinance by caption only. Uh, before I read the ordinance, I do want to thank Angie Blevins for all her hard work and Sydney Bressel. Uh, they worked really hard to get these new employee handbook in place, and I think you all will be pleased with the product that they're going to present to you in June. So thank you, Angie, for all you did for this. Yep. Uh, ordinance 23-7, an ordinance to repeal section 66-26, 66-27. 66 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 66-46, 
an ordinance to amend section 7.03 of chapter 7 of the city charter pertaining to the human resources department uh, no one has signed up for public comment staff report a uh, council in 2010 the title of the personnel department changed from personnel department to human resources department this ordinance amends section 7.03 of the city charter to adequately reflect the title of our human resource department the first reading of this ordinance occurred at the regularly scheduled city council meeting on may 9th all right, looking for a motion and a second for a second reading, which can be in full or by caption only. Mr. Mayor, I move for a second reading of this ordinance as presented by caption only. Second. All right, motion for Mr. Farnham, second for Mr. Holmes. Council discussion. Hearing none, if the clerk would call the roll, please. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. All right. Uh, reading of the ordinance. Ordinance 23-8, an ordinance to amend section 7.03 of chapter 7 to the city charter pertaining to the human resources department. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much. Looking for a motion and a second for adoption of the ordinance. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt the ordinance as presented. A second. second. All right. Motion from Mr. Farnham, second from the vice mayor. Uh, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Next item, uh, an ordinance to amend section 2-62 and 2-63 of chapter 2 to the city code pertaining to conduct of meetings and order of business. I want to sign up for public comment, staff report. Uh, council, this is an ordinance to amend uh, the conduct of the meetings and order of business. We have discuss this at length any changes that were suggested at the last meeting have been made and that ordinance is before you tonight all right thank you very much uh, looking for a motion and a second for second reading which again can be in full or by caption only I move to approve the second reading of the ordinance as presented second by uh, caption only mm, yeah by <laughs> caption only <laughs> thank you your second yeah. that you'll was. appreciate that <laughs> All right. Motion from the vice mayor, second from Mr. Holmes. Council discussion. Hearing none, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Reading of the ordinance. An or ordinance 23-14, an ordinance to amend section 2-62 and 2-63 of chapter 2 to the city code pertaining to conduct of meetings and order of business. All right, thank you. Looking for a motion and a second for adoption of the ordinance. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt the ordinance as presented. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Farnham, second from Mr. Holmes. Please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. All right, uh, next item, ordinance 23-9. An ordinance to amend City Code Chapter 78, Article 7, Section 78-202, pertaining to tax on purchased meals, levy and amounts. Uh, no one signed up for public comment. Staff report. Uh, Council, the purpose of this ordinance is to increase the tax on purchased meals from 7% to 10% effective July 1, 2023. The additional funding is necessary to provide operational capital funding for general government services, including but not limited to public safety, education, health and welfare, streets and park and recreation. All right, thank you. Looking for a motion and a second for second reading, which can be in full or by caption only. I move the second reading of, of the ordinance by caption only. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Holmes, second from Mr. Farnham. Council discussion. Uh, hearing no discussion, if the clerk would call the roll, please. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. All right, reading of the ordinance by caption only. Ordinance 23-9, an ordinance to amend City Code Chapter 78, Article 7, Section 78-202, pertaining to tax on purchase mills, levy, and amount. All right, thank you very much. Uh, looking for a motion and a second for adoption of the ordinance. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt the ordinance as presented. Second. All right. Motion from Mr. Farnham, second from the Vice Mayor. Clerk, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. 
All right, uh, next item, Ordinance 23-10, an ordinance to amend City Code Chapter 78, Article 6, Section 78-172, pertaining to transient room rental tax levy and amount. No one has signed up for public comment. Staff report. The purpose of this ordinance is to increase the transient room rental tax for the nine, from 9% to 13% effective July 1, 2023. This additional funding is necessary to provide operational and capital resources for general government services, including but not limited to public safety, education, health and welfare, streets and parks and recreation. All right, thank you. Uh, looking for a motion and a second for second reading, which can be in full or by caption only. I move the second reading of the ordinance by caption only. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Holmes, second from Mr. Farnham. Council discussion. I do have one question. What was the estimated um, increase in revenue from the lodging tax increase? Approximately $220,000. That's per, I'm sorry, that's per penny. So um, it'd be close to 800 and some thousand, 880. Mm -hmm. About 80, okay. okay. Hearing no further discussion, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. All right. Uh, reading of the ordinance by caption only. Ordinance 23-10, an ordinance to amend City Code Chapter 78, Article 6, Section 78-172, pertaining to transient room rental tax levy and amount. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, looking for a motion and a second for adoption of the ordinance. I move that we adopt the ordinance as presented. Second. All right. Uh, motion from Mr. Farnham, second from the Vice Mayor. Please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. All right. Uh, next item is Ordinance 23-11, an ordinance to amend City Code Appendix to Chapter 70, Paragraph 1A, pertaining to solid waste fees. Uh, we do have someone who signed up for public comment, and that is Mr. Nutt. And I would tell you the rules, but you know how they work. So I do. Thank Go you, ahead. guys. Good seeing everybody tonight. Uh, I know this is going to get voted through on the trash fees, but I want to hear this public public on the retired people and the dis disabled people. What are you going to charge them? Is there any qualifications for these folks that's worked all their lives and the people? that draw on disability, what kind of qualifications do we have on this? So I'll say um, there, are, there are a couple of requirements you have to meet, um, but you go through the Commissioner of the Revenues Office and there's a, there's a form you fill out. Um, Mr. Reeds, do you remember the exact qualifications? I do not know the exact qualifications. You have to be uh, 65 disabled and have to meet the uh, federal poverty guidelines. Um, that's off the top of my head. I'm looking for that code section right now. Um, I believe I believe if you meet those requirements, it takes you. I, I, I believe it gives you a, a third. I understand that, but you got other. You got some people out there. You guys, you know, it's a struggle to make it, and you're on disability. It's it's a struggle. I think they should just. I, and I'm going to argue on this too. I think you guys ought to just disregard any disclaimers on the disability people and on the people that's worked hard all their lives and still, I mean, give them a break. I'm going to have to pay it, and I know. Do I like it? Hell no. But, and you've heard me argue with it. No, I, dis I still disagree with it. But come on, before you guys vote in this tonight, make it for the, the people that's worked all their lives and the other people, you know most of the people's not going to qualify for this. You guys know it. Randy, you know it. Tamara, you know it. You've seen the numbers. Give these people a break. I know it's going to be rough still yet on other people. But give these other people a break. I'm talking for the citizens of Bristol, Virginia. I'm representing them all. And you know I got a mouth, I don't care to run it. Please, please, please 
Give these people a break. Don't let them pay that. Let them pay the 20 some dollars a month, whatever it is. They've earned it. And other people, I mean, you know, 30, $37, I'm not 30, $27 a month, that don't sound like a whole lot, but it can be. You, you add that up by a year, it's a lot of money. But before you vote that in, please, I'm asking. Y'all have a good night. Thank you very much. Council, that code section 70 hyphen 24, it's the exemption for elderly and disabled persons. Solid waste user fee relief shall be provided to property owners at least 65 years of age or anyone found to be permanently and totally disabled as defined in Code of Virginia section 58.1 hyphen 3217 provided the applicant's income is at or below the current federal poverty guidelines. Uh, the Commissioner of Revenue, it's the responsibility of the Commissioner of Revenue to verify that and uh, document that on a yearly basis. All right, thank you. Uh, move into staff report. I counsel the purpose of this ordinance is increase the monthly residential collection fee from $33 to $60 effective July 1, 2023. This additional funding is necessary to provide operational and capital resources for the solid waste fund. Pursuant to Code of Virginia section 58.1-3007, notice was properly given of a public hearing on proposed tax rates and solid waste fees for the 2023-2024 fiscal year. The notice of public hearing was published in the Bristol Herald Courier on Sunday, April 2nd, 2023, and citizens were given an opportunity to appear before the local governing body at the April 11th, 2023 regularly scheduled city council meeting. This ordinance was passed on the first reading on the, at the May 9th, 2023 city council meeting and has not been revised. All right, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> looking for a motion and a second for second reading. This can be in full or by caption only. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I move for a second reading of this ordinance by caption only. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Farnham, second from Mr. Holmes. Council discussion. The uh, original proposed fee was too high and the current proposed fee is still too high. I proposed a way to lower it to $55, but it seems that what consensus to pursue that plan. I hope we can revisit it later because we don't have to wait until next year to change it. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to raise it um, at all. I would like to keep it at the, at the monthly fee that we're paying or even find a lower fee. Um, and I know um, we have talked about our retired and el elderly that's on fixed incomes and I know it's going to be tough. And, you know, a lot of times they only have maybe one bag in their trash can. They don't even have much trash. Um, I, I hate that we're having to raise it, and I hope that we can um, – we've looked at everything. We have honestly cut down to the bare minimum in many of our departments um, across the board. So my hope is it doesn't last long. Um, and we can review it and bring it back down as soon as possible. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll echo that, uh, what the vice mayor said. I, I do think it would be good for us to try to get the word out about that, the program, Mr. Reeds, that you referred to, because um, some people do qualify for that. Not everybody does, but I do think there are probably some people out there that do qualify for the program that don't know about it. Um, so just trying to figure out a way to spread the word about that. and. You know, I've said it before, I think it just comes back to, you know, we've got the bill, the bill has come due, and we've got to pay our bills here at the city. And, uh, you know, we could go on and on all night about the past, about the dead and the falls and the landfill, but we, we're in a position where we have to pay our bills. So it's not, uh, it's not a fun situation to be in, but, uh, you know, we're in a rough patch, but I'm optimistic about what will be like in a few years in the future. There's, there's nothing we can say that makes this um, palatable. Um, I'm hoping it's a very, very temporary number, a very temporary thing. I'm hoping we can find, find ways to, to lower the rate to, to better address some of the needs there and find a way to, to make it easier on folks in our city. You know, I'll say, you know, first in, in regards to what um, Mr. Pollard said, I think some of the 
uh, avenues that, that he had discussed for, for having a lower rate you know, included uh, increases to the admissions tax and the, uh, the cigarette tax, which I think you know, we're all, at least for the most part, in favor of. So you know, we'll, we'll be able to go back and address those items in the near future and discuss you know, if, if we want to raise those taxes as well. Um, you know, I'll, I'll just echo what everybody said. $60 is a whole lot of money to pay for trash. Um, and I get it. I don't like it. I'm, you know, I'm a single dad with a one-income household. It, it's no fun. You know, everything costs more and the paycheck hasn't gone up like the cost of everything. So it's, it's not easy for people. And, and, you know, we are fully cognizant and aware of that. And, you know, there's no way to cut it, no way to spin it that makes it good, makes it better. But, but it is something that we have to, we have to be able to pay our stuff. You know, we have to be able to fund these projects at the landfill. We have to be able to fund disposal of our own trash, you know, at, uh, at a different landfill that we're taking our trash to. So nobody likes this. You know, nobody wants to do it. Nobody likes to do it. Um, sometimes the only options you have are bad ones. So, you know, that's, that's where we stand on it. And, um, that's all I've got to say. So, uh, hearing no further discussion, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? No. Osborne? Yes. All right. Uh, reading, of, reading of the ordinance by caption only. Uh, ordinance 23-11, an ordinance to amend city code appendix to chapter 70, paragraph 1A, pertaining to solid waste fees. Right, thank you. <clears throat> Looking for a motion and a second for adoption of the ordinance. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt the ordinance as presented. A second. Right, motion from Mr. Farnham, second from the vice mayor. Please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? No. Osborne? Yes. All right. Uh, ordinance 23-12, budget ordinance for fiscal year 2023-2024. Uh, no one has signed up for public comment. Staff report. Uh, council, uh, pursuant to section 10.03 of the city code of Bristol, Virginia, on March 28, 2023, the city manager submitted his annual budget estimate for the fiscal year 2023-2024, including a bound document detailing the proposed budget ordinance and other required information. Prior to the first reading on May 9th, the city manager presented revisions to his initial proposed budget and city council proposed one minor revision. None of these revisions impact the total expenditures reflected in the budget ordinance and all were adopted on first reading. The budget ordinance requires one additional reading. All right, thank you very much. Uh, looking for a motion and a second for second reading, uh, which can be in full or by caption only. I'll I make him, oh, go ahead. I move the second reading of the ordinance by caption only. Second. All right. Motion from Mr. Holmes, second from the vice mayor. Council discussion. I asked at the inaugural meeting for the budget to, um, for the budget to include funding for a city attorney. Um, I've repeated that request through the budget process and I proposed the funding amount and details to fund it. Um, I'm afraid I may have generated some hostility for taking a stand on this issue, but I see this as one of our bigger needs right now. Okay. Anybody else? Well, I would like to just throw out there, you know, it, it's been a, uh, a tough budget year, obviously. We know we have got a lot of needs in the city and we don't um, have unlimited resources. Um, when it does come to the city attorney position, you know, I've been here for a few years now, and we've we've discussed that from time to time. You know, I I think again, I, what I'm about to say is I don't want it to sound like the city attorney position is not important. I don't want it to come across that way, but I think a lot of people think the city attorney is is down in the courtroom fighting every day in, in you know for the city, and, and that, that's really not the case. You know, um, city attorney is is drafting deeds and ordinances, and um, you know we're in a position where we're probably the only locality um, this side of Roanoke where our city manager has a, a law degree. So we're, we're at an advantage uh, over other localities that don't have that. Um, a lot of times if there is some sort of, of legal issue, uh, we do seek outside counsel. Uh, we've done that numerous times this year. So, uh, and I'm one who has said for, um, 
for a number of years, uh, maybe not here in open session, but in, in other meetings, that uh, the city manager is busy, and we need, we've got a whole layer of, of city staff that, I mean, we've got great people here now, but we also need more positions, and, and you know, starting with the city manager, that we need an assistant city manager um, who can be there to handle some of the things that the city manager slash city attorney uh, may not be able to get to, because he's focused on, on other things. So uh, I think we're making progress. Um, Obviously, we've had some some great hires here recently. I, you know, the rest of the city staff here. Obviously, there's a handful right now that I'm seeing that weren't here when I started, and I'm, I'm happy all of you are here. And we're building that uh, that Super Bowl winning roster here at the city. Yeah, I'll just add. Um, I know that this has come up many times. I've had a lot of discussions with people. I think that in a if we had money in the budget to hire that additional staff and have that city manager, that is uh, one of the first things I think Mr. Each would be happy, as, happy to do that as well, to split that position. Um, it does save us some funding right now because he's able to do some of the things that um, actually having that staff on board would cost us a lot of money. So right now as issues come up, we can um, hire someone from outside to handle those, um, and it, it really is, um, it really helps us cut down on cost. Um, in a few years, we can look at it when we have income to do that, um, but for right now, um, it's working, and um, I hate that they took it out of the budget years ago, because I think that once you take something out of the budget, it's hard to get it back in, especially um, with a, a salary of a attorney salary. So, um, but that's something I believe we're all working towards. We just can't do it right now. I want to change gears just a little bit here. I want to thank uh, city staff for working so hard um, on this budget. Um, we, we ask you to make lemonade out of, out of lemons. I don't know if we actually got great lemonade, but uh, we got close. I could use a little more sweetener in there. Um, but I, I appreciate the work you all did. This is um, a very difficult year, very difficult budget. Um, I'm hoping, hoping some of these these extreme measures that had to be taken this year, we can look look at them very soon, next year, hopefully sooner, to kind of readjust if things things start turning around or if we get assistance elsewhere. So I I hate that we're in this situation, but I appreciate the work that you all have done to 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 make the best of it where we're at. It, it was a lot of hard work, so I appreciate that. You know, looking at, uh, looking at the budget as a whole, somebody very smart once said that uh, don't let perfect be the enemy of pretty good. Um, we, we have a pretty good budget overall that we're working with. I know that, you know, it is painful for us to have to raise taxes. It is painful for us to have to raise fees. Um, but, but one thing I've appreciated is, by and large, pretty much every city department understands the gravity and the severity of the situation that we face. And, uh, and nobody made outlandish requests. You know, everybody's budget stayed pretty, pretty tight, pretty where, it, pretty where it has been, where it should be. Um, so I appreciate the city staff for understanding the gravity of our situation. I appreciate our CFO for the work she put in and her staff for, for putting this budget together. It's, it's a Herculean task, you know, to produce a budget and, and get it to where we understand that we can balance it. Um, so I think we've got some, you know, overall a pretty pretty good situation with this budget. You know, setting aside, you know, the the revenue increases. Um, can yeah. I just can I just add one thing too? Um, I think it's important to highlight the good. I think sometimes we don't do that enough. In in this budget, we are funding the school system more than we did last year. Um, I believe our our firefighters are um, getting the the ALS stipend. Um, that we've talked about for a number of years, and I think hopefully they're happy about that. We appreciate all the work they do, and we're making some investments in some capital needs, like some police cars, the, some things that we need to just take care of as a city. So, so I'm excited about it, and sorry for interrupting. I just wanted to throw some of those things out there that I, I think are good things to talk about. No, I appreciate that. I, I think that, <clears throat> I think that um, you know, the positive aspects sometimes get lost. You know, so, so I, I do appreciate that, and you know, I'm glad that we've been able to do a few things that will be beneficial and positive for our city going forward. You know, I think, I think that is important to highlight and to remember. 
Um, hearing no further discussion, uh, please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? No. Osborne? Yes. Reading of the ordinance by caption only. Uh, Council, before I read the ordinance, I do want to thank Janet and Jenny, Janet James for her time and effort that she put into this. This was her first budget with the city of Bristol. Um, I know it's not easy coming into a new locality and learning how things work in our locality as compared to her previous employer. Uh, but I think her and her team did a fantastic job of getting this budget together. So um, thanks, Janet, for all the work that you did on this. It couldn't have been done without you, so thank you. I also want to thank department heads um, as we go throughout the year. It's not said enough about what they do and how they um, manage their budgets and to make sure that they're uh, spending taxpayer dollars wisely. So to every department head out there, I appreciate everything that they do. I'm grateful to work with them, and I'm glad that uh, I can be a part of their team. So it's a great team to work for and pleased to be here. Uh, ordinance 2312, budget ordinance for fiscal year 2023-2024, making general fund, community development, block grant fund, solid waste disposal enterprise fund, local funded capital projects fund, state and federal funded capital projects fund, commonwealth opportunity federal revenue sharing fund, transit enterprise fund, flexible spending fund, asset forfeiture fund, COVID-19 federal funds fund, school operating fund, school textbook fund, school food service fund, school local capital projects fund, and school construction fund appropriations for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024 in the following amounts. General fund, $65,460,000. $460,466. Community Development Block Grant Fund, $420,000. Solid Waste Disposal Enterprise Fund, $37,236,915. Local Funded Capital Projects Fund, $960,600. State and Federal Funded Capital Projects Fund, $16,197,792. Commonwealth Attorney Federal Revenue Sharing Fund, $35,300. Transit Enterprise Fund, $1,064,549. Flexible Spending Fund, $28,500. Asset Forfeiture Fund, $150,600. COVID-19 Federal Funds Fund, $2,195,560. School Operating Fund, $41,205,198. School Textbook Fund, $1,428,780. School Food Service Fund, $2,494,952. School Local Capital Projects Fund, $797,904. School Construction Fund, $2,102,214. And regulating payments out of the city treasury and also fixing the tax rate and real and property on real and personal property for fiscal year 2024. Uh, Council, I'd also add that we'll have the budget books available later this week for you all. All right, thank you very much. Uh, looking for a motion and a second for adoption of the budget. Mr. Mayor, I move we adopt the budget as presented. Second. All right. Motion from Mr. Farnham, second from the Vice Mayor. Please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? No. Osborne? Yes. All right. <clears throat> Closed session. Uh, pursuant to section 2.2-37118A1, Code of Virginia 1950 is amended. Discussion, consideration, or interviews of prospective candidates for employment, assignment, appointment, promotions, performance, demotions, salaries, disciplining, or resignation of specific public officers, appointees, or employees of any public body, personnel. Looking for a motion and a second. Mr. Mayor, I move we move into closed session for the reasons stated. Second. All right, motion from Mr. Farnham, second from the Vice Mayor. Please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. We'll be back. Council members certify that only business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements as specified in the motion to convene an executive session were discussed. Please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. I would like to make a motion that we hire um, Antonio Jims as our new transportation planner. Second. Uh, yep. All right. Motion from the vice mayor and second from Mr. Holmes. Please call the roll. Farnham? Yes. Holmes? Yes. Nave? Yes. Pollard? Yes. Osborne? Yes. And welcome to the city. 
And uh, no further business, we stand adjourned. Yeah.